I'm a producer at TT Games, uh, working on the LEGO games, uh, so from a day-to-day -day point of view, uh, kind of working on uh, helping the development team trying to create the games, also working with the licensors such, such as LEGO, or say for example if we're working on Harry Potter, we work very closely with Harry Potter's agency, or DC for games like Batman. So when I was very young, uh, I used to play games with my brother a lot of the time on consoles like the Spectrum and the Amiga, and then as I grew up I kind of like was realised that you can actually get a job doing these type of things, and so uh, I decided I wanted to kind of get into the games industry while I was still in education. So my college course and my university course to try and kind of prompt in that direction uh, and then I, I was lucky enough I, I kind of just kind of applied for a job in the games industry got a job as a tester uh, started off working in the QA departments and then uh, about a year later I joined TT Games. I'm Jonathan Smith I'm head of production at TT Games where I've been working now for 10 years we've been making the Lego games and that's my focus and making sure that the teams and everyone that's involved make the right games at the right time. I was lucky enough that my father worked at a technical college before home computers. They had a computer club for the students there that I was able to come in as a very young boy and see television screens with keyboards attached to them going as terminals back to the mainframe that you could control. And the idea of controlling what was on television was incredibly exciting for a young boy. Then, because I was lucky enough to be the right age here in the United Kingdom, we were blessed with a, console, with a computer made by Sir Clive Sinclair uh, called the Sinclair ZX80, which you made yourself. Uh, and to be able to create from a box of wires and bits of plastic something which could play what back then seemed like the most amazing game. And of course now it would be unrecognisable, it's just a, a series of flashing black and white objects. But um, really, you know, it's a transforming experience for a young boy. Mm. And uh, from then on, that, that's what I was always excited by. It's a great privilege to work with uh, the world's greatest company in the field of play, Lego Company, based in Denmark, a privately owned business that's been going for over eight decades now, are the experts at giving children a wonderful time that uh, is, develops their brains uh, in a way that's incredibly fun. And for us to be able to draw upon those values as we came to make Lego games was, was incredibly energising. It sparks so many new ideas. In, in the very first days of Lego Star Wars, well, yes, we were trying to, to build the levels out of Lego in, on the desks, to put the bricks together and, and sculpt the environments. Um, it was a painstaking job that ultimately was better served by the very talented artists that we were working with, creating those digitally. But even still today, we have a team whose desks are covered with Lego bricks and they physically build the great vehicles or the special robots, um, whatever amazing new objects we need to interact with in our games. It's, it's, it's one of those things that everyone kind of always grows up with and they get these Lego sets to be able to make and then kind of have their own type style of play. We also get to do that in the gaming world and it, it's really important that we have that side of the game, it, that involvement, being able to build creativity and being able to kind of mix and match what you can do. So that's kind of like where sort of some of the key values that we have in our games. <laughs> LEGO Star Wars now seems like a brilliant idea. How could it have failed when it had the combination of two such successful brands, LEGO brand and Star Wars, and what could possibly have gone wrong? But at the time, when the team was creating those very first prototypes, and then as the game development continued, and I and my partners were taking this game to show retailers, to show distributors, and often getting quite blank looks, not because what was on screen wasn't funny and exciting, but because it was so different to what else was already out there. And there wasn't a history of very successful LEGO games at the time. They were, they were a toy thing, they were something to be merchandised, to be licensed off and put in the category of many other games made at the time for children that weren't really creatively interesting or, or, or fun in the long term. What we delivered in the end, through the work of the team, was a game that had accessibility and charm, and then great depth and surprise in it as well. And I think there were a few key features in LEGO Star Wars that, looking back again, were quite radical at the time. I think the idea that when you lose all your hearts, your main character falls to pieces and then momentarily comes back together again was actually, was actually quite shocking at the time. And now we take it for granted, it's just another fun way of playing, where the player isn't punished for experimenting, they're encouraged to fool around and see what happens, what's the worst that can happen. Mm. You lose a few studs, it doesn't matter. So um, 
Ideas like that, like free play, where you could have multiple versions of the same character, taking characters from one movie and putting them in the story of a different movie, that's part of the freedom and permission that you get in the Lego world that we all saw at the time. Mm -hmm. But it felt like a risk as we were making that game because we didn't know whether anyone was going to like it or get it, or least of all, whether it was going to be commercially successful because there is a long history of games that people were proud to make, that have got a certain charm, that perhaps a small audience appreciated, but that didn't really break through into the market. Mm -hmm. And um, so we had an uphill battle there. And um, as the success started to build, um, we really did breathe a sigh of relief. interesting things is that when we kind of created Lego Batman, um, superheroes have always kind of been a, a bit of a tricky one to do in games because uh, people always have a kind of an indication of what these characters are meant to be like and kind of their strengths, their weaknesses and that can be difficult to kind of get into a world of gaming mechanics because sometimes uh, you get characters which are very difficult to use, they're, they're, they might not necessarily have something which lends itself very well to gameplay. When we're making a Lego game, we edit and we focus and we're going to pick out the fact that Batman is a wonderful fighter. I'm going to make Lego Batman have a fighting system in a Lego world, which is just really brilliant fun. That then becomes the focus. And then his gadgets and his tech and his Batmobile fit beneath that as a second layer. But there's a whole layer underneath that of detail that we just don't need to do. We've already made Lego Batman with a focus as fun as he could possibly be. So when we were looking to make Lego Harry Potter, um, we really wanted to make sure that we could uh, have a game that really kind of captured the magic and the essence of what Harry Potter world was about. And so we were really trying to push the mechanics and the team did a brilliant job of kind of adding things that were specifically for Harry Potter. So for example, the, the, the way that you could interact with the Lego in the world, we wanted to do things such as uh, being able to move the Lego uh, and have more control over where you place it within the world. So for example, we had this this kind of like a Lego blocks that you could pick up and move around using Leviosa and put down wherever you wanted to kind of build your own platforms, build your own way through the level and that was really kind of important for the Harry Potter experience. Well something that's very important about the world of Harry Potter is that our heroes go on a journey across many years. So one of the key things that was new for the first Lego Harry Potter game was that our character would attend lessons and learn and grow and gain new abilities. In our previous Lego games you'd got new characters, that's how you were introduced to new abilities. In Lego Harry Potter, Harry, Ron and Hermione would get new abilities themselves, they would ping in and they'd go Oh, I have a new ability. Now I can do more things in this world of Hogwarts and access more areas of the story. So progression from year to year was very important for the gameplay of Lego Harry Potter. <laughs> Everyone who works on a game uh, pours their heart and soul into it. In, in every discipline, on the programming side, on the art side, on the animation, on design and all they want is to have made good work. Work that's experienced and enjoyed and played with next week, but work perhaps that lasts as well. And so for all of us, the idea that Lego games and what's been established now over these years are going to be remembered and, and looked at and showcased, uh, it makes everyone very proud um, and certainly keeps us going, making more games for the future.